Hi folks, this is Richard Scoville, uh, faculty with the uh, IHI Improvement Advisor Program. Um, I wanted to uh, take a few minutes to create this video to help uh, students in the IA program uh, master some of the tricks and tips uh, involved in creating Schuhart charts with uh, QI charts. Uh, so I'm going to, in, in, in this demo, take about 15 minutes, I'm going to create a chart. Uh, and then I'm going to use uh, Excel uh, uh, features and a couple of uh, insider tricks and a little bit of software to help uh, uh, enhance the appearance of that chart uh, in, in, in some commonly useful ways. Uh, so here's the data from SPC uh, Assignment 1. And um, let's dive right in and create a chart. I'm going to begin uh, using QI charts is it's already installed here so I go to the add-ins menu um, to find the commands for QI charts and there's the new control chart command uh, selecting that uh, these are proportional data the data is percent of uh, unplanned returns to the OR so that is a proportion or percentage and I'm choosing P chart as the appropriate chart type um, you'll learn more about the different types of charts uh, in workshop two. For the data uh, range, I'm selecting uh, this area that includes the dates, the numerators, and the denominators. And the first row of that range does contain field headings, so I'm making that selection. Um, I'm going to pass over this uh, displaying the data table in the chart since the default uh, data table in QI charts uh, uh, provides basically redundant information with the, uh, the information with the, the lines that are already in, in the graph and so I'm going to leave that off and show you a different way to create data a data table in a, in a few minutes. Uh, next step index column is the months, numerator is the unplanned returns, Denominator is the number of surgeries, and we're good to go. Um, phases, this is the, uh, the, the feature that allows me to shift the mean of the, the Schuhart chart uh, based on signals that we see in the data, for, but for now, based on special causes, but for now, I'm going to leave that just as a single mean, single phase for the whole chart. So here is our basic uh, QI charts chart. Uh, it's a good start. Uh, it's pretty clean, but it definitely needs some enhancement uh, to help um, make, make it communicate more clearly. Um, so let me begin uh, by paying attention to the axes. Uh, and over here on the left is uh, the y-axis, uh, which is uh, formatted as a percent. That's good, but I can see that it needs a decimal place uh, to help make those numbers uh, readable. This duplication is a sign that we need, duplication of the numbers a sign that we need uh, some additional decimal places. I'm right clicking on that axis, choosing the format axis command to lead to the dialog box. Uh, so here are the scaling options for the uh, for the, the axis. I'm, I'm going to leave the 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 lower limit at, at zero, that's about right for this chart. Um, and just to show that it's possible, I'm going to change the upper limit uh, to 0.04, that is 4%. Uh, and you can see what's happening there with that. Um, I'm choosing uh, the number to change the formatting. Um, we've got the percentage already s selected by default. I just need to add one decimal place here. Um, and that should be what we need for that axis. So far, so good. Um, I also want to pay some attention to this uh, x-axis down here. Uh, it, it is dates, uh, pretty clear, but it's a little hard to read, and uh, uh, we don't need uh, this 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 default format. It would be better to have just the month and the day. So again, uh, month and year. So again, I'm uh, clicking on that, right clicking to get the format axis uh, option. Um, and here we go. Under number, uh, I'm choosing date because dates are numbers and uh, in Excel. And then I'm going for my favorite uh, format here. Oops, that's not it which is this one, three letters and digits for uh, the date. Um, 
that's good. Uh, that horizontal uh, arrangement is still a little bit hard to read. So I'd like to do two further things. I'd like to change the alignment of those uh, uh, dates to make them a little bit easier to read and reduce their size, actually. So I'm right-clicking again. Here's the pop-up menu uh, with options that allow me to change the size. Uh, so maybe I'll get it right about there. Um, and then a right click, oops, a right click on that axis, back to the format axis menu. I'm choosing alignment. Now, uh, there are options here for, for changing the alignment. The horizontal would be best, but you see what we get when we do that. There are too many uh, labels. Uh, the other option is to, is to, uh, place an angle on these things. So uh, this might be something you want to explore. Uh, a 45 degree angle will give me this arrangement and uh, we'll, we'll accept that. We'll take that. So here's my chart so far uh, with the uh, labels and rotated things. Let me, let's pay attention to those, uh, the labels, the titles on the chart. Uh, I need to modify this one. I'm uh, clicking on it and it allows me to edit. So I'm going to the front uh, and uh, entering the title of, of, the, uh, of the chart, which is going to be percent uh, unplanned returns to the OR. And um, another little Excel trick here, if I hold down the, oh, sorry, shift enter, oops, uh, gives me um, a uh, second line in that uh, chart and then uh, in that title and then I can uh, select some text uh, and change its appearance a little bit for example by getting rid of the, uh, the uh, bold and uh, shrinking that down so there we are very good uh, percent I hate to leave that uh, that x-axis label just like that so I'm gonna uh, percent returns, I think will we'll capture the oops, returns, capture the uh, uh, the notion there. Okay, so now we've got a pretty good looking chart. Um, uh, we would like to add some notes to this, uh, some labels to, to show where the changes occurred. Uh, the information is in column D. I'll get to that in a minute. But first, uh, I want to show uh, a kind of an insider uh, technique for adding a, a useful data table to this chart. And I'm going to do two things. I'm going to make the graph a little bit larger by stretching the box. And then I'm going to click on the chart area uh, and shrink it to create room for the data table at the bottom. Now, the general technique I'm going to use to, uh, uh, to create the data table is to, um, uh, I'd like for it to contain the, uh, the numerators and denominators, which would be useful additional information uh, for this chart. Um, the tech, overall technique I'm going to use is to create the data table on the Excel grid. Um, and format it exactly the way I want, and then copy it into the chart as a graphic object. And this requires uh, several steps, so let's get started. I'm going to start by selecting the uh, data that I need for the table, and there they are. And I'm going to make a copy, so uh, copy command. And then I'm going to copy them uh, to a, a, a yeah, this is a problem. No, it's not. I'm going to copy them to a blank spot on the spreadsheet. So I'm moving off to the side here, and I'll pick this cell. Uh, I'm doing a paste, but instead of just the normal paste, I'm moving to the paste special command to transpose uh, rows and columns in that, uh, in that paste operation, which gives me this arrangement. Interesting. Uh, I want to widen this column a bit, and um, maybe I'll just let this say number of returns. Uh, that looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to 
I've got more space than I need here in these columns. So I'm selecting all of the columns. And I'm going to adjust their width to be just as narrow as possible to show me the numbers without flipping over into dollar signs, which is what happened, or pound signs when the data gets too small. Reduce this column width a little bit. No extra space. That looks pretty good. Um, so there, that's what I want my data table to look like. Uh, so I am going to uh, select it like that and copy it. I'm using the Control C uh, keystroke to do that. I'm going to paste it here, but again with my paste special options. Instead of pasting it uh, as numbers, I'm going to paste it as a graphic object, as a picture. And now what I have is a free-floating graphic that contains uh, my data table. Again, a copy using Control C. Back to my chart. I select the chart itself. Press Control V uh, to paste in that graphic object. I'll drag it to the bottom of the chart. Um, and I need to resize it a little bit. Um, the uh, Did I goof this up? No, I didn't. Okay. That number actually goes with February. So I'll change my scaling. And I can fiddle with this a little bit more. Align the scaling shrink the table until the numbers align with their columns. Move this down, recover some space for the chart, and there's my data table uh, using a, a formatted range in Excel. Looking pretty good. Uh, the last step is going to be to add annotations in this chart, which I'm going to do with uh, uh, an add-in, an additional add-in. Um, this add-in is available from uh, uh, developers Rob Bovey. It's available from his company, w Apps Pro, www.appspro.com. It's a free uh, utility um, that does just one thing, but it does it very well, and it saves a lot of time for those of us in QI. So it's going to allow me to place these labels on the chart uh, as annotations. Um, and I'm going to begin this process by, the, the, there's a peculiarity in, in uh, XY Labeler, which is that uh, it doesn't like to have blank cells uh, in the range that includes the labels. So I'm going to just go through here and type in and enter a space into each blank cell to make sure that we don't have any empty cells and that the labeler program will behave itself when we need it to. I think we're ready. Selecting the chart using the add labels command. Uh, the data series is called subgroup uh, because that's the name of the, the main line series in all of the QI charts charts. My label range is where the labels are located so that would be here. Great. I'm selecting all of the cells, uh, same number of rows that we had in the index column. Uh, and I'm choosing, I want those labels to appear below the graph. Choose an OK, and the program does its work. There are the labels. To change their format, um, again, it's the same basic procedure. I click on one of the labels, and it selects them all. A right click gives me access to the pop-up menu, and I'll uh, increase the size of those labels uh, to make them a little bit more usable. Um, now, at this point, they're interspersed with the points on the graph, which is not ideal. I'd like to move those out of the way. So I'm, if I s click on one of the labels, I get 
them all selected, but if I click again, I get just the single label selected, and I'm going to drag it down out of the way. If I hold down the shift key while I'm doing this, um, it drags in one uh, dimension only, so it doesn't wander to the side when I move it, and I'll just arrange these in as unobtrusive a fashion as I can. Getting out of the way, let's see. Getting all of these moved. Takes a moment or two. And this one, because it's implementation and it's different, I'll put it up here at the top. Um, okay, so uh, this is our finished control chart. Uh, I've uh, shown a number of uh, standard uh, formatting features in Excel, uh, as well as uh, some, uh, some fancy tricks. And uh, I hope this has been useful to you, uh, and look forward to seeing you in an IA wave uh, sometime in the future. Take care.